with you uh, this weekend. Thanks for taking time out of your day to come and worship um, your brothers and sisters in the house of the Lord and to focus in on Jesus. Man, I hope that you're doing really well. Serena and I are glad to be back. We missed all of you guys. And, uh, you know, we bring you greetings from Pastor Cedric and from Suzette and from all the brothers and sisters at Peniel Baptist Church in Aruba. They wanted me to make sure that I let you know that they think about you often and they are praying for you regularly. So you have brothers and sisters in other parts of the world who are thinking about you and praying for you. I know that some of those brothers and sisters are going to be joining us this Christmas season coming up. So pray for them as well. Well, my name is Jeff, and I'm one of the pastors here at Oka Bible, and um, I'm always excited to be in the house of the Lord, and uh, I tell you what, one thing I'm excited for this week is Thanksgiving dinner, man. How many of you are looking forward to a Thanksgiving meal, right? And uh, are you ready for Thanksgiving? You got all the things taken care of you? You know, some of us have family coming in. I heard families already coming in for some folks. Some folks are coming from out of town, or you're going out of town, and some of you might be you might be hosting Turkey Day yourself at, at your house. Others of you, you're going to somebody else's house for, for Thanksgiving, right? I, I love that one. You get to go to somebody else's house and get the benefit of the meal without all the work of the cleanup, man. That's, that's all kinds of things to be thankful for. For our family, it really is a time to be grateful and to express gratitude and thanksgiving and, and thankfulness to God and towards others. And it, it's a time for us to be with friends and be with family and, and our physical family and our spiritual family as well. And, and uh, it can be really a meaningful time for us in our lives. But it can also be a tough time as well, if we're honest, right? I think sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming, all the stuff that's going on, all the things that we're trying to coordinate. And so this week I want to look with you uh, in the Bible at this passage. It's really kind of anchored into uh, tuning in and focusing on the source of our gratitude and our thankfulness. And it's in Psalms 121. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn there with me in the Old Testament. Uh, the book of Psalms, uh, chapter number 20, 121, we'll be starting at verse number 1. Uh, it should be in your bulletin. We'll try to have it up on the screens as well, leaning to your neighbor. We call ourselves open Bible if you want to do. Okay. Look in your Bible, look in the Bible, look in the Word for yourself. Amen? And uh, so Psalms 121, as you're turning there, is really all about lifting our eyes to God. And I, I, if, I, if I could kind of give one kind of message, if we were, as we're going into this Thanksgiving week and into the holiday season, really kind of full steam, sort of the message as we walk into this week and, and even into December and all of that it brings, it would be simply this. That if you want to lift up your spirits over the next couple of weeks in, in a meaningful way, lift your eyes to God. If you want to experience Thanksgiving in this upcoming holiday season in a meaningful way, lift your eyes to God. If you want to lift your spirits, lift your eyes to God. Yeah, look to Him. And it'll be a challenge for us to be able to do that with all the things that are pulling at us in these next couple of days and weeks. It'll be a challenge for us to remember to do that with all the things that we need to accomplish between here and between there. Uh, so uh, let's just check out Psalms 121. This is a great psalm. You're going to be real glad you came to church because it's a really great section of the Bible. I believe this is an awesome psalm. Psalm 121. When we get to the red word, I want you to help me read it when we get to that place that's in there, okay? It says this. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. Who? The Lord. the Lord. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and of earth. My help comes from the Lord. Listen, my help doesn't come from my family coming in during the holiday to help us cook some meals and share some family secret recipes, although that's good. My help doesn't come from getting the house all ready and getting everything all cleaned up. My help doesn't come from, from pecan pie, although I love some pecan pie. You got extra slice for member of brother, right? Uh, my help doesn't come from the, the greatest of all Thanksgiving traditions that are out there. That's the Dallas Cowboys always playing a certain game, right? Playing and winning, right? Even though they, they might need a little bit of help, but I believe it can happen. I believe it right? Listen, my, my help doesn't come from uh, all, all, all of the, the, the Black Friday sales jackpots that I might get coming up on the, on the day after Thanksgiving. My help comes from the Lord, period. And so the psalmist is just saying, we got to look up. we got to look up. If you want to lift up your spirits, lift your eyes to God. You're going to have to look past a lot of things in order to be able to do that. One thing you got to kind of look past is traffic, amen, huh? Hello, somebody. You know what I'm talking about? 
Me and Bree were traveling this last week, man. The lines are long everywhere already, right? The, it's already crazy. It's about to get even more crazy as the week comes up, right? I, I mean, you're going to have to look past long lines and a lot of things that are going on up over the, the next couple of weeks. You're going to have to look past and you're going to have to be, be patient with, with, with the, uh, you're going to have impatient people and frustrated people. You have to look past all of that. You might have to look past the bottom line when it comes to staying under your budget, right? Hello? There's a lot of things that we're going to have to be uh, uh, looking past. There's a lot of things that you're going to be tempted to look at and to focus in on. But you have to look past that and look to God. And so the first principle we see from the song of this year to have a meaningful holiday and Thanksgiving season is this. Just keep looking up. Just kind of keep looking up. You know, Jimmy Fallon, uh, I like watching some late night shows sitting there. That guy is always funny, especially during his opening monologue. He's in there. And then he asked the people to tweet uh, uh, in some of their Thanksgiving fails, uh, some things that they've experienced during Thanksgiving time that were failed, and, uh, and send them in on, on, on Twitter. And so people wrote some really great things. I want to share a couple of them with you. Here's the first one I'm sending there. It says, One year, Grandma showed up to Thanksgiving with everyone's Christmas presents. And we just all went with it. <laughs> right? Whoa, all right, yeah. Happy Thanksgiving Christmas, my grandma. We're grateful for that part of Sunday. Here's another one sitting there. It says, when I was six, I sat on the pumpkin pie on the way to grandma's. My mom covered it with cool whip and served it anyway. <laughs> what a pie still warm, boy. <laughs> You must be crap coming out there. Here's another one sitting there, right? My girlfriend told me to dress up for a family's Thanksgiving dinner, so I showed up dressed as a pilgrim. She meant wear something nice. <laughs> Howdy, pilgrim. <laughs> feel like that. Here's the last one. This is one of my favorites. My grandma now, I thought your fat friend Lee was coming. <laughs> Lee was sitting next to me and just lost 30 pounds. <laughs> Epic Thanksgiving fail, right? But there are a lot of opportunities for things to go wrong when it comes to the holiday season. And as we look over this week and the next coming weeks coming up, uh, it can look like a little bit of an uphill climb for us in our lives. And some of you might already feel like you're in an uphill climb in this season of your life. And that's, that's exactly the perspective that this psalmist is writing from in Psalms 121. He says, I lift my eyes to the mountains. And you know... When we think about the mountains, the mountains are beautiful, right? They're majestic. Most of the time when we look at the mountains, we're like, it's amazing. They're beautiful. We live in the mountains, right? It's really beautiful scenery for us. But in the biblical area, in these ancient times, uh, when people talked about the mountains, it was often in reference to the fact that they were filled with danger. It, it, was, it was in the mountainous passes that, that there were thieves that hid on the roadside. It was in the mountains where you had to travel on isolated roads and people could come out and, and mug you and, and rob you and, and, and beat you. In fact, the, the word travel actually comes from the word travails, right? And so travel in the ancient world back then had a little bit different of a connotation to us than it often has for us today. So we get frustrated at all long lines and all kinds of stuff like that, but we really don't worry about people kind of jumping out and taking everything that we have. But when the psalmist says, I look to the mountains, he's actually saying, I look to my struggles. I look to the difficult times. I, I look to the uphill journey. I, I look to the hardships. I, I look to what's ahead of me. And where does my help come from? And he says, my help comes from the Lord. So he sees the struggle, right? But he looks beyond the struggle. And here's why this is so cool. This, this actually is a psalm of ascent. This is one of the psalms they call a psalm of ascent. And so the psalm of ascent in the Bible, and remember the psalms were, were written for the pilgrims that were making this, this pilgrimage to, to Jerusalem. Uh, and, and, and these were psalms that would have been sung. It's in there. And so as they, as they got near, close to the city, as they're making their pilgrimage to Jerusalem, there was this 18-mile stretch long where they actually would have had to go up some 3,000 feet and elevation uh, as they entered into the city. And as they were walking, they, they would sing these songs of, uh, of ascent. The, the psalms are a songbook, and so this is one of the songs of ascent. And so as they're climbing towards the city of Jerusalem, they're, they're singing these songs, and I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. It would be ringing all throughout the mountainside. And it's uphill that they're singing. They're, they're climbing, right? It, it, it's hard. It, it's, it's elevation. Have you ever been at really high elevation? I mean, we're already at high elevation here in Colorado Springs. But I mean, like, on top of, like, Pikes Peak or, or even higher than sitting there, right? I mean, really high elevation, high altitude can really mess you up, right? 
I mean, whenever we have some friends come from out of town to visit, one of the first things we tell them, hey, listen, you, you need to drink a lot of water uh, and, and, and don't overdo it, right? For, especially for these first few days, have them acclimated, right, to our, to our elevation. And otherwise, if they, if they don't do that, they're going to get altitude sickness, right? The whole time that they're here, it's going to mess them up. They're going to get this nonstop headache, and they're going to feel weak, they're going to feel out of breath, they're going to feel tired. This is all some of the things that come with elevation. But that's, that's altitude, right? I mean, if you're a runner, if you're a hiker, if you're a biker, if you ever, if you ever had to deal with elevation and do any of those races up on the uphill climb, I mean, once you're up there, right, the air gets a little bit thinner. Everything starts to change. And so for us in our lives, sometimes we feel like we're walking in high elevation. Sometimes it's, it's hard to breathe. It's hard to catch our breath. And sometimes it's hard to, to take steps, to put one foot in front of the other. And sometimes it's uphill all the way. Who feels like they've been walking uphill in their lives? Who feels like they're just walking uphill in some areas of your life? And here's what I want you to know today. You're not walking uphill alone. You're not walking uphill alone. Lift, lift your eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. He's my sustainer. He's my rock. He will help me. He will guide me. He will walk with me. He won't abandon me. I, I may be walking. I may be short of breath. I, I may have a headache. I may have elevation sickness. It, it may be ugly, uh, but I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to keep putting one front in front of the other because I have a God who's gone all the way to the cross for me to so go all the way to the top of the mountain for me. He's not going to give up on me. He's going, not going to abandon me. <clears throat> Excuse me. He, he, he's not going to check out on me. I lift my eyes to the mountains. I take my, my, my view off the things that are going on around me and I look to my God. That's where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heavens and of earth. Now look at this, the very next verse in Psalms 121, beginning at verse number 3. This is really good. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says, He will not let your foot... What? Slip. He'll not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Oh, well, that's good. That's right there. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither sleep nor will neither slumber nor sleep. And here's there's a lot here in, this, in these couple of verses. But this is what I want you to kind of lean into. First of all, it says he will not let your foot slip, right? If you're walking up the mountain and it's steep, right, and you're singing his songs, one of the smallest and most immediate concerns you have, right, is right in front of you, right? You don't, you don't want your foot to slip. You don't, you don't want to lose your footing, right? You don't want to fall down. And I know a lot of people just fall down all the time. You know people who are like that? They just slip and fall down. It doesn't matter. It couldn't be nothing on the floor at all, man. They'll, they'll find you. They'll just slip and they'll just fall, right? They fall down coming down the stairs. They trip over a rug. They're always slipping and falling. <coughs> It's something to be concerned about, right, when we slip and when we fall. And so the psalm is just saying, God will watch over the smallest detail in my life. Even just where I put my foot. He will not let me slip. And sometimes we think uh, the things that we're facing are too small for God to worry about. You ever thought that before? Ah, uh, no, God not too big to worry about this. You know, like, 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 God doesn't really worry about these little things in my life. I can't really pray about this little thing that's in there, you know. But we hear prayers of kids, and sometimes we dismiss them as, you know, those are just kind of kids' prayers that's in there. <coughs> kind of like uh, kids' prayers, right? Uh, and listen, there's a biblical word for, for sort of the, the, the nature of God that theologians use to describe who God is. It's Google. <coughs> There's this biblical word that's there that describes the nature of God. It, it, it's kind of like this, this tension that's there between imminence and transcendence. <coughs> imminence means that God is in and through and around everything. He's in, through, and around everything. <coughs> I cannot get this to go down. Pray for me. <coughs> and what the psalmist is declaring in this is that even the very next step that I take, God cares about me. Even where I plant my foot, he'll help me to get traction. God will walk with me in this moment. He, he cares about the little things. It's one of the reasons why we can give th thanks in our lives. And, and next time you're, you're tempted to think, you know, you can't pray for something in your life because it's too small. Remember this, there is nothing too small for God. 
I mean, we often say there's nothing too big for God, right? But there's also nothing too small for God either, right? And God cares about the little things in our lives, then he's going to care about the things that are going on in the minutia. And the psalmist is saying that even though I walk, he won't let my foot slip. And then he goes on, he talks about this, this, this other kind of idea. He says, he will, he will not sleep nor slumber. Did you catch that? Well, this is amazing. Think about sleep. Sleep is an amazing thing, right? Every night... <clears throat> Excuse me. You and I are, are, are every day, depending on what your work schedule is, right? Depending on your work schedule. Every night or day, uh, uh, we sleep for about six, maybe eight. Jade, some of y'all like ten, uh, twelve hours a day, right? We 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 go to sleep, right? We're we're unconscious. We're we're helpless. We're 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 not aware. We're out, right? I mean, if, if anything should drive home how finite we are. It's sleep. I, mean, I don't know about you, but it's easy for me to fall asleep, right? I remember back to days on the fire truck, man. I, I could be on the way to emergency lights and sirens going, but brother could get a nod in real quick. I could. It's easy for me to fall asleep. Now, I, I probably stay in asleep, but it's easy for me to fall asleep. Now, Lee Ware tells me this tells this story, and I, by the way, I got a permission to be able to share this with you. Now, I'm not just embarrassing you, dog. You used to tell me I'm calling people out, right? I got Lee's permission, right? But she tells the story, you know, Lee, when Lee goes to sleep, Lee is knocked out. I'm like unconscious, like, you know, Mike Tyson put one on her, knocked out of sleep. Nothing wakes her up, right? Even when the kids were little, you know, uh, they talk about her and Terry, how Terry had to get up with the kids that were in it because when she would go to sleep, she would just be oblivious to anything else that was going on. And one time Terry was at home and he was gone and she was knocked out kind of in this kind of sleep, dreamlike state that's in there. And she's telling stories about, man, I think this I was sleeping like you hear this baby crying. And she said, I can hear for what seemed like for hours. It's in there, right? Kind of like in their dream place. She's like playing to herself, man, whose baby is that? <laughs> Somebody needs to get that baby. Right? I don't know. How, who, would, who would leave their baby crying like that was in there, right? And it was her baby. It was Lisa's, right? <laughs> right? Just, just, just knocked out, unaware. That's what sleep does for us. How many of you... Uh, recently said to somebody, I'm tired. Just turn to the person next to you and say, I'm tired. Now turn back to that person and say, but God's not tired. Listen, God can turn your tired into triumph. God can turn your tired into his triumph. You ever, you ever, you ever think that you think, you think you're tired now? You're going to be really tired in the next few weeks, right? We get a, a, a whole mountain of things ahead of us called Thanksgiving and then the Christmas season. We got a, a, a climb still to go. We got shopping to do, decorations to put up. We got travel plans to make. We got money to spend that we don't have. We got to go do some stuff, right? And we're going to be tired at the end of it. We're going to be exhausted and at the end of it if we're not already there now, right? The Bible says, God does not sleep nor slumber. And I was thinking about this, man. Listen, when, I, when, I, when I'm asleep, almost anything can happen to me, right? You know what? Because when I'm asleep, I'm knocked out, right? I'm unaware. I remember one time I was asleep and I woke up and I had a spider bite. I'm thinking to myself, man, while I'm asleep, something crawled on me, crawled all the way up to close to my neck, dropped its venom in me, right? And I didn't even know. I was unaware, right? The Bible says in the Psalms, that listen, God does not sleep, nor he does his slumber. It's in there, right? I'm unaware because I'm asleep. And the Psalms says, so we should give thanks to God. God never, never, ever sleeps on you. God doesn't sleep on you. He never slumbers. He's never caught unaware of anything that's going on in your life. There is nothing that takes God by surprise. There's never a time where God does not know what's going on. He, he's not weak. He doesn't have to rest. He doesn't have to lay down. He's not tired. He's God, and he's available at all times. And you can take your prayers. You can take your concerns. You, you can take your stuff in your life to him at all times. And you can believe that he's got it. He's got it. In fact, I love the person who says, you know, every night I say my prayers before I go to bed. And, you know, I just give all my concerns to God, you know, because he's up all night anyway. And he can worry about it, right? And that's a great perspective for us all to have in our lives. The psalmist not only says that God does not sleep in our suffering, he says that he watches over us. 
He watches over us. In fact, six different times in this song, we see this word, watch or keep. God, God watches over you. God keeps you. God watches over you. God keeps you. He watches. He keeps, right? And so for the weary traveler climbing the mountain, it's a reminder that you're not alone. I don't know what your mountain is right now. For some of you, it may be a health mountain. For somebody, it might be a financial mountain in your life. And some of you are going through this holiday season and you're facing loss. That always feels like, like a mountain. You know, I, I lost my father almost 20 years ago. And, and every time I get to the holidays, man, I, I, I think of him, right? It's kind of weird, you know? I, I miss him and I ache for him. I love him. And, you know, at all times, you know, these, these kind of new emotions kind of pop up even more so than the holidays, during the holidays. You ever experienced that? And in the middle of that, right, we just got to keep looking up. Come on, now. Don't get distracted. Don't get off mission. Don't get off course. Just keep looking up. And all week I've had this kind of uh, specific prayer request. I, I started praying this while Reed and I left some, a, few, a couple, two, three weeks ago, and spending some time in my prayer time, really just kind of praying through Colossians number one, right? Uh, Colossians chapter number one, Paul, the Apostle Paul, he prays for the, the people of the church of Colossae, right? And he, he asked God that, that he would give them spiritual wisdom and understanding so that they can know exactly what his will is for them and for their lives. And so for every day, this, this last week, I've been spending time with God and, and I pray, give me some spiritual wisdom and help me to know exactly what your will is for me in my life. And I've been praying that for you. I've been praying that for our church family. God, give our church family spiritual wisdom. Help them to know exactly what your will is for them in their lives. Right? And I've been praying that for our leaders in our church. God, give our leaders spiritual wisdom so they'll know exactly what your will is in their lives. Give them, give them the courage and the strength to do your will in their hearts and, and in their lives. Uh, but that kind of centering, right, that kind of meditating really is powerful in the midst of all these distractions that go on in our lives that are, that are happening all the time, every single day, right? Don't get, don't get, don't get waylaid by those. Keep looking up. Here's another thought for us, and it's simply this, to expect God's help. Expect God's help. Right? What are you expecting in your life? How do you view life? Do you know that how you view life is really, really important? Do you expect God to help and move in your life and in your situation? I don't know if any of you watched the football game last week, but you know the Cowboys beat up on the Detroit Lions. Like, yeah. <laughs> but you know, the Cowboys have been having this on and off here all along. They start off, you know, really hot, and they lost a bunch of games and sitting there, right? And then they go and sit in their lobby. You know, they're just kind of up and down. Basically, I've had two emotions lately when it comes to football. And I just know that, you know, every game, right, you know, one is just, you know, just let them, just let them lose everything. If they lose everything, you know, then we'll get a new coach and, and uh, you know, get a new staff. And they'll just blow the whole thing up because, you know, we've been kind of, we've been kind of on the 50-50 bubble for a while now, you know. I mean, you know, we still like, you know, American team, but we've been on the 50-50 bubble for a while. So we, we might just need to change things up. Just start over, right? But now they're starting to win. Last time I tuned in, they were winning. They're starting to win. Last time I tuned in, they were winning. They're starting to win. 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 They're just like barely squeaking by, right? By like some miracle of God, you know, they, they just kind of barely pull it out. They're sitting there, they just keep winning. And so last week I watched some of the game and I didn't expect us to win at all. I mean, the entire game, I didn't expect us to win. And even when they were ahead, right? Even when they're ahead, I'm thinking to myself, oh, they, 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 they're going to find some way to blow it. I mean, all the way down to the end, I'm skeptical. Like they're going to find some way that it's going to be all over, right? But by some miracle, they look over and they won. But you know, I want you to know, I, I was miserable that whole game. Because I, I thought, it doesn't matter what the score is, we're going to lose. And then we won. And I learned something. This is what I learned. When you don't expect good things to come, it, ex it impacts your, your experience in the now that you experience. You know what I'm saying? that translate for you? When you don't expect things to go well, you have a hard time enjoying watching something that's actually going pretty well. Right? When you don't have hope in your life, it's hard to live with a sense of expectation and joy moving forward in your life. And, and the same is true on the climb uh, as we go up the mountain, as we're going one foot in front of the other in, in the midst of, of difficulties, in the midst of, 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 of trying uh, experiences. We've we got to expect God's help. 
rely on God's help, depend on God's help. We gotta view these things as if God is gonna move on our behalf. And if you'll just trust that He will show up and help you, not only will He help you, it'll change your experience on the climb. Amen. And you'll enjoy it a whole lot more. Right? Some of you are waiting for God to answer your prayer while you're going through something, sitting there, and you're miserable, and He's already working it out, but you, you haven't seen it yet. You need to start thanking God right now. If you'll trust that God will show up, He'll not only help you, He'll change the experience in the climb for you, in your life. You'll enjoy life a lot more. You'll enjoy it. It doesn't mean you won't face difficulty. It doesn't mean you won't face troubles. Jesus says himself, don't be surprised if you have troubles. It says that he'll, in this passage, says he'll keep you from harm. And that word harm, many of your, 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 your translations in your Bible is translated as evil, right? The Lord will keep us from evil in our lives. We may face difficulties. We may face troubles. We, we may face hardships. And we ultimately, uh, God is going to deliver us from all evil in our lives. Look what the psalm says. Uh, look at the beginning of verse number 5. Look at this. this the Lord watches over you. The Lord is your... Your what? Shade. Shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. That's rich. That's rich. The Lord watches over you. He, he's your shade. He's at your right hand. Some of these, your translations translate it this way. That phrase, right hand, is that, that, that God is beside you. He's the protector that's beside you. Are you catching the, the metaphor that the psalmist is laying down? He, he says he always stays on the sun side of you, right? The hot side of life. Today in, in our Western culture, right, the, the gentleman walks on the traffic side of the lady to protect her from all harm, right? Pay attention, young man. But God is the true gentleman. He walks with the pilgrims on the hot side on the sunny side of the road to keep them cool and in shade. Just a picture. I don't know what you have beside you right now in your life. Some of you right now in your life, you got some, you got some haters beside you. Some of you guys, you got some critics beside you. Some of you got some loud, unreasonable people beside you right now in your life. Some of you got some brokenness beside you. Some of you got some tension going on beside you. But you also have a God who's beside you. And, and if you want to get through this season with as much joy and as hope as possible, you've got to look past the challenges that are beside you, and you've got to look to the God that's beside you, that's in there. And you've got to lift your eyes up to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. And what you face, uh, 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 what you focus on will determine a lot of what you experience in your life. What you just dial into is going to determine what you're going to experience in your life. In fact, I would, I would say it this way. The way that you and I perceive our problems and our difficulties is more important than the actual problem and difficulty that we're going through. Because when you see your problem and you realize that God is bigger than your problem, that changes your whole perspective. And, and unless you move forward with hope in your life and expect God's help, right? It will detract you from the experience that you're having right now. Listen, don't go into Thanksgiving week. Don't go into December. Don't go into the holidays and live with a perspective that just sort of assumes that God's not going to show up in your life in any way. Don't move forward in a way that just assumes that God's not going to help, that assumes that God's not going to do anything in your situation. We are people of faith. We must live with expectation. we got to wake up early every day and believe and trust God that God's going to show up and He's going to move and He's going to work in our life in powerful ways. Why? Because He's watching over me. Because He's promised He'll be there. Because he's, he, I'm not alone in my life. He's in there. He's on my side. He's on the sunny side of my life, on the hot side of my life. He's going to protect me. He's going to watch over me. And I'm not going to face this holiday season like a non-believing person. I'm going to face this holiday season like a person of faith. And when you look to the Psalms again and again, you see this trend. I mean, David and the other Psalms, as they write all through the book of Psalms, they talk about, they, they start focusing on God, and, and they talk about their troubles. They talk about how significant their troubles are, and how hard their troubles are, and how overwhelmed they are by their troubles. But then, then in the very next Psalm, or in the very next verse of that Psalm, and that's in it, they start talking about God. But, but this is the kind of language that they use. They say, I cry out to God day and night. I look to you, God, in the morning and in the evening, 
I turn to you, God, again and again. What are they saying? I lift my eyes. I turn my focus. I, I, I set my view on the King of Kings and on the Lord of Lords. And see, when, when you look, where you look has a huge impact on how you experience the situation you're in and that I'm in and in our lives. And so God says, he's right there beside you on your hand, right? Then he says, he says, listen, the sun will not harm you. So the psalmist starts by saying, you know, as we're going up the mountain of life, and you won't let your foot slip, that's a little thing. And then he moves on and goes all the way to the sun and all the way to the moon, right? In other words, God will protect us in the little things, and in the big things, God will watch over us as well. He will be your shade. Now, that's a big deal, because this was a desert climate that this is being written in, right? I don't know if you've ever been out in the desert climate. I used to live out in the Mojave Desert. You know, hot, hot. I think that's where they wrote that song, it's hot in here. It was, Mojave, it was hot, it was hot in Mojave Desert, right? It'd be 110 degrees in Mojave Desert. We used to take an egg and crack it out on the tarmac that was out there, and it would fry it up, it was hot. I mean, hot. I mean, all kinds of hot that's in the Mojave Desert. I understand what it's like to be in the desert climate. We understand how important shade is when it's 110 degrees outside, right? When you live in a desert environment, even in Colorado, right? Uh, it, it's been a sunny day, you know, and it's hot outside. You pull into the parking lot of the grocery store, you're trying to find that one little tree to get a little shade so you can move your car in there, right? Why? You move a little shade on it, because otherwise you don't get in your car, it's going to be like 190 degrees. Burning you up is out there, right? It's like an oven, right? So you look for shade to get protection because it's hot. And the psalmist is saying, even in the heat, even when the heat is on, God's my shade. God will protect me during the heat of the day. When the moon is shining at night, God will guide me. He will be my light. He will be my director. He will guide my path. He will protect me. He will watch over me. He keeps me. He takes care of me. The Lord watches over your coming both now and forevermore. And basically, this was kind of like a, a, a slang saying during the day. which said, God's going to watch over you in every circumstance, right? He's going to watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. God's going to walk and watch over every one of your circumstances. And so, as it heats up in your life, and if it's already heating up in your life, lift your eyes to the Lord. You want to lift your spirits? Lift your eyes to God. Look to the mountains. And yeah, there was, they're majestic, but there's more than majesty. You're also looking at problems and struggles and, and, and the dangers ahead. And you ask, where did my health come from? It doesn't come from the mountains. It comes from the God who created the mountains. Yes. Help comes from the Lord. And the Lord will show up and he will move. My prayer for our OVPC forever family. My prayer for, for all of you these next several weeks. And I've been praying for this for you every day. Because that God will fill your hearts and lives with thankfulness, with gratitude, and with joy. And with the greater spiritual understanding of the love that God has for you in your individual life. And that he'll give you spiritual wisdom in your work, and in your homes, and in your families. So that he'll help you know how to navigate your life as you walk with him. And, I, and I, I want to share some scriptures with you to just give you some encouragement and then we're going to go. And some of you may be facing some mountains in the next few weeks. It might be looking a little scary for you. And so you feel like you're, you're, you're running ragged by all the demands and all the expectations that you have of yourself and of others. But well, I want you to take heart. Because Jesus says, take, take my yoke upon you and I will give you rest. If you need energy and courage to deal with the situation that's ahead of you, Paul says in the Bible, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you need wisdom, Jesus says, ask for wisdom and you will receive it. If you need guidance and, and you're tired of going at it alone, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I give up my life for my sheep and my sheep know my voice. If you're overwhelmed, Jesus says, fear not, for I have overcome the world. If you're wondering how you're going to make ends meet this holiday season, Jesus says, don't worry about tomorrow what you will eat or what you will drink or what you will wear. My Father knows that you need these things. If you're struggling with your emotions this year, Jesus sends his spirit. His spirit gives us love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, and self-control to live out in our lives. Our health is real. His help is available. His presence is real. His presence is available. And after all of the names uh, that we use for Jesus this time of year, Emmanuel is one that just sticks out to the top of my mind, which means God is with us. He's with us. Whether his name is sung on the radio this time of year or not. He's with us in our culture. He, he, we celebrate His presence whether we choose to allow Him to, to be buried in the busyness of life or not. He's still there. He's with us. Lift your eyes. And what does your help come from? It comes from the Lord. 
Want to lift your spirit in the holiday season? Lift your eyes to the Lord. And listen, maybe some of you are here today and you're thinking to yourself, man, that sounds good, but I don't really have that kind of relationship with God yet. I don't know how to lift my eyes to the Lord. Because you haven't crossed the line of faith, putting your trust in God for your salvation, for your forgiveness of sins. And I believe some of you hear my voice right now, and you've not yet crossed the line of faith. And I want you to know that I prayed for you today. I prayed for you this morning. I've already been asking God to pull on your heartstrings this morning to, to help you make the commitment that you know you need to make. You know that God's been calling you to come home to Him. You know that He's been moving and working in your heart and in your life. He's been knocking on the door of your heart. And I want to encourage you this morning, just take that step towards Him. To reach out to Him, to allow Him to do a supernatural miracle in your life. The Bible says that if you believe in Jesus Christ as Lord, and you confess Him with your mouth as He's Lord, that means the word Lord means your boss, your Savior, you're, you're ready to be under His control, under His direction, then you'll be saved. Right now you're in a broken relationship from God. You really can't draw near to Him. You really can't lift your eyes to Him because you've got sins that are unforgiven. But if, if you confess Jesus and you say, Jesus, I'm a sinner and I want to be forgiven of all my sins, you can be forgiven of your sins today. And when you do that, it will restore your relationship back with God. You can be reconnected with Him this morning. You can have this presence to guide you every day in your life. You'll be able to take your cares and your concerns, the small things and the big things to them every single day. You may have to still walk uphill, but you won't walk uphill alone. 